Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of PLP. Uh, today we have uh, Marquis Helms and Monica Nokita, and I'm Stephanie Amari. And uh, on this episode, we are going to talk about chores and uh, chores by age and which age your child should be to start chores and all that fun stuff. So we'll get into that today. Awesome. All right. Um, so I'll start it. I'll lead it. So um, what age do you guys think is like too early to start chores or too old to start chores? Do you, Monica, for your children, do you have them do chores? I do. Um, I am currently working on just getting back on track with that um, or we kind of re revising it for the summer. But my kids all started about the same time, which is the older one was probably six, maybe. And, but the youngest one was about two, um, two or three. So the younger one gets the benefit of starting earlier or the <laughs> not the benefit, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> kind of gets thrown um, into to the mix of chore starting because her siblings are older. Yeah. And I remember like I from a big family and I remember always doing chores, but I was towards the end of the family. So I think that kind of just happens. The more kids too, there's more work and the more help you need. So um, chores also just become more important at a younger age. But I remember doing chores when I was really little, like always, I was like always a part of our family life is, is the chores too. So I don't know about you guys, if you guys always did chores when you were younger remember like I remember like when I was maybe in middle school but it was it didn't really seem like a chore because I enjoyed cleaning and doing stuff so it didn't really seem to be like ah, I don't want to do this or something that my parents had me do but I mean maybe I don't I honestly have no clue I don't remember oh, really? you don't remember what about you Marky I re only remember because it's the one thing that I hate doing as an adult <laughs> and I was the one that had to unload and load the dishwasher and now as an adult, that is what I avoid the most is doing that in the kitchen. Oh, wow. Oh, my, uh, oof. I had a lot of chores and there was a lot of us, but vacuuming, dusting, mowing the lawn, um, edging the lawn. Wow. <laughs> but we had a lot. We did a lot of stuff for sure. But I, I mean, it got more as we got older, you know, but yeah. Yeah, so we never had to do, I know specifically like outdoor things. My dad would do like the mowing the lawn and do all that stuff and he would take out the trash. But taking out the trash is one thing that I hate to do. That is like the worst, like I, taking out the trash, taking out the trash cans. Um, when my parents visit, that's one thing my dad will still do for me is I don't even have to ask, like he'll still do it, which is very nice as a grown woman. When my parents visit, my dad will stay, still <laughs> take out the trash for me. Um but I don't remember, now that you guys are talking about chores, I don't remember, maybe my parents labeled it as something different growing oh, up. Because I don't remember having like, this is what you need to do on these days, or this is what your specific things are to do. It's interesting. I'll have to ask my mom because I don't remember. <laughs> well, and I think that plays like a little bit of a role in my expectation of my kids. Like on one hand, I'm like, oh, they should be doing all the stuff like we used to do at ton of stuff right but then on the other hand I'm like well I don't want them to like have to do all this stuff you know because like I didn't super enjoy necessarily doing all that or I always felt like it was a lot of stuff so um so it's like I teeter-totter on that though a little bit but we did get allowance um and that was conditioned upon you doing your chores it wasn't like necessarily like, paid for a specific thing um but we did get some like at some form of allowance too which like made it I think guess just like keep going you know at some level um it was reinforcing so we wanted to keep continue to do it but uh, and I do have that built into my kids like um chores too what so when Marley was two right so she started doing chores uh what were some like what were some of the things that you had her do at that age um hers was really basic and and one of the things I did do is like we tried to like um sit down with the kids and ask them which chores they wanted so we laid out what were all the chores that were like available um, to them and they could more or less choose which chores and how many they wanted and they would get paid for a dollar each chore they completed at the end of the week 
Um, and not all tours are created equal. Some are easier, some take more time, some are only twice a week, like the trash, like you only have to take it out once and in once, um, you'd still get paid a dollar. Um, and so we did like lay everything out. And so for the older two, um, they ended up picking five and we kind of like helped coach them, like how much would be too much and like what times a day was it and is it doable? So we like had discussions around what the chores were, but it was everything like feeding the dog, um, emptying the dishwasher, uh, taking out the trash, um, things like that. Marley's, I think the one that she ended up doing is like putting all the, the, the napkins, like setting the table. But for us setting the table is just like the napkins and the utensils um, because like we usually play at the kitchen and then, you know, hand it over. So that was one that she did. And then clearing the table, actually, I think after that was one of the first ones she did, which is take the dishes over to the sink. Um, hers and anybody else that was still sitting. I mean, generally speaking, the kids kind of take their own over, but so hers, so she had to take hers. And then like, if there was anybody, other adults there, she would take theirs over if they were done. So it's like kind of simple, simple, really simple tasks, you know? Right. Um, and did she need help doing any of those? Or was it something that like she was like other than telling her like, hey, you need to clear the table, like it would be something that you'd have to physically help her with? Just like um, really maybe if it was like too heavy, obviously we would take it or um, making sure she only took like one thing at a time because like she can't hold a plate and a cup at the same time and carry it to uh -huh, the table. Uh -huh. So just like kind of coaching her on that a little bit. Um, but that was that was probably it because it was it was relatively simple. And like, oh, like setting the table, like counting how many people were there, how many people did she, I mean, and obviously it was mostly five every time, but like sometimes if, you know, my husband wasn't home yet or, or whatever, we wouldn't be eating with him. So that would be like mm -hmm. prompted a bit for her. And she was more like two and a half closer to three. She was on the upper of the two, but um, but yeah, she, those little things. And then the older kids did like the, and the older, they were four and six, right? Roughly or four and five and a half, but they were doing like the, um, you know, like the, the taking out the trash that she needed help with my oldest one. She was the oldest one that did that, but the trash cans are really heavy and they do have the roller. So it depends. Like if the grass bin was all the way full, we definitely would like help with her and take it out. Um, you know, stuff like that. But now she's nine and she can do it on her own. But do they pick the same chores as what they did like in the beginning when you first started with them? Or is it no, they, they do change? ask like they see how easy some of the other ones are. They're like, <laughs> wait a minute, I want that one, you know, and like two people can't have the same one. Um, so we say we negotiate and say, like, okay, once we get to January again, we'll reshuffle the chores. Um, and usually it's like they one picks, then the next picks, then the next picks, then the next picks. Um, the other thing was that other two had five, but Mar I mean, Marley, like she wanted a whole bunch in the beginning because of course she wants to do what they're doing. But in actuality, like she would always put up a fight if we asked her to do it. And so we ended up whittling it down only to two because part of the chores is like, I can ask, I'll give you one verbal reminder to do it. But after that, if you don't do it or if you complain, you don't get paid for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's part of the chores doing because I'm like, you don't have to do it. It's your choice to get paid and do the money and then, you know, or get money for it. But it means no complaining about the chore <laughs> to me, at least you can complain <laughs> on your own <laughs> to your siblings, <laughs> not to me. And that was going to be my question is how many reminders do they get? Do what, what sort of things are put in place so that they remember to do their chore? Do they have to do it by a certain time? Um, well, we had a, we have a visual that has like the little, it's like little magnets. Um, and so they put it on there so that that's what we can change the chores pretty easily to if they wanted to, but, um, and then they would check it off and usually they would just check it off at the end of the day. Um, so that would be a little bit of a prompt for them if they didn't do it. But a lot of the things that they do are kind of like either embedded throughout the day or like the trash cans, I would usually give at least one reminder, like towards the end of dinner or in the evening, just to take them out. Um, or like if the dishwasher was ready, like I'd have to let them know that it was ready and needed to be emptied. Um, but that's my son and he's really good. Like I give him one reminder and he does it. So <laughs> that was, it was easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the visual for sure. And at the end of the day, their, their routine was like when they, they, after they brushed their teeth and all that stuff, they would go down and check off their chores and make sure that everything for that day was done. So awesome. Yeah, How about you, Steph? With Harrison, his are broken up by uh, like parts of the day. So like in the mornings, if, you know, he's got a, get his backpack ready, get dressed, do all the things. And then it, like 
because he always wants to like watch TV or something before school. And so it's like, okay, you need to do these things. And then you can have like the TV or iPad or whatever at the end rather than moving it up in the beginning. And so some days like he'll get it. And then some days like he's just kind of, you know, lazy in the mornings and complaining that he doesn't want to do it. And it's like, well, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, similar to like with, with what Monica is saying, it's like, it's not money when it's broken up into the small parts of the day, but if you get it done and you do it with enough time, then you get the TV or whatever. But if you don't, then it still has to be done. You're still going to do it. You still have to go to school in the morning. Um, so his are written down. I have like a really, it's just typed out on the refrigerator. Um, and uh, it's broken up like uh, before school, after school, and then before bed. And then those are like the daily ones. And then he has weekly ones. And it says like whether or not what days you need to do it or like one day a week or whatever. And so, I mean, it's not, there's some that he's pretty good at and he'll do and without complaining. And then it's funny that you mentioned the dishwasher because he hates loading and unloading the dishwasher. And I also don't like loading and unloading the dishwasher. So for both of us to have to, I'm like harping on him to do it and he's complaining about doing it. It just ends up being not a good time in our house around that time but it gets done I'm like we it needs to happen or we're not gonna have dishes to eat off of and everything's gonna be dirty and and I'm not pulling stuff I'm not washing dishes by hands when it could be thrown in the dishwasher um but he likes doing dishes so I wonder if that would actually be like a good choice for him to like you don't want to load the dishwasher then do the dishes then like maybe I can try that I will say my dishwasher is currently broken and so we've been using paper plates as much as we can. But even if we don't, like it's so easy because like we all, we wash it like right away and we dry it and then it's always ready to go. And I was like, huh, maybe it's this <laughs> right? no dishwasher thing, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes faster. It's like, I don't let it build up because I can't just throw it in. It's just like, we do it. And then it's just sitting out there on the drying rack and we just use the same stuff. So it's like, yeah, no putting away. No, you know, I don't know. Right, you're just reusing thing. the same stuff over and over. Yeah. Um. So I had a question. So when you're, when Mark's, Marley was like two or three, when she first started doing chores, and then I think Harrison was maybe eh, like around three or four, would you label them as chores? Like as they get older and we talk about chores, chores just kind of has like a, like a have to, like a, I don't want to do it. Something I have to do. I don't choose to do, which Monica, I like with your kids, like you're letting them choose. So there's a little bit of choice built in, but when they're younger, like, do you, I didn't call it chores with, it was just with Harrison. It was like something he had to do. So it was like, oh, after you're done playing with the toy, you have to put it away. So I wouldn't necessarily yeah. call that a chore. But with Marley, did you call it a chore with her or? We did call the chores that they got to pick and get money for. We did call them chores. Um, I don't know why we just, that's just kind of what we assumed that we would call them. But we do have things that they have to do that we don't call chores. Um, and we don't have really have a name for it. It's just that we always say like, it's just something that you have to do as part of living in this house. Um, and that is like every time like when I, I do the laundry and I fold it mostly, but they have to put everything away. Yeah. Um, like making beds, putting their laundry in the hamper, um, like hanging up their towels after shower, like all that stuff. Like that's just part of what you need to do. And so like, of course, some of my kids do it easier than others. <laughs> some need more reminders. And so like, but, you know, they do ask like, well, why do I have to do that? And it's like, well, that's something that, you know, we have, you have to do as living as a part of this household, you know, everybody has to do it on their own for themselves. Um, but it's mostly things that are just for them. Um, it's not like they're doing something for like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's just kind of how we call it. We don't really like call it chores. Whereas the chores oftentimes have to do with like doing something for the whole family or it benefits the whole family. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's like a super clear distinction, but we didn't call those chores because those aren't, you don't get paid for those. <laughs> those aren't, those aren't up for negotiation mm -hmm. um, and you just have to do them. And it might be different too, having like the multiple kids in one kid. Cause it's like, when it's just Harrison, it's like, everybody has to kind of pick up their own weight. Whereas when there's all the kids, like it very quickly becomes like one of the chores is picking up all the shoes at the end of the night. Cause we have multiple entrances and we take off our shoes and we walk in the house. So it's just like, I mean, at the end of the day, there's literally like 15 <laughs> pairs of shoes around the house. 
Um, and so at the end of the day, well, King, it was Kingston's job. He has to keep all the shoes, the garage shoes, the ones in the back entry and the front entry, keep them all up and put them in the kid's shoe closet. Um, and he just had to do the kids because the adults didn't have that many. And I like to put my own shoes away. So, uh, and, but it would become like Marley had that job for like a hot minute. And every time she's like, why do I have to do the two shoes? Like that whole thing. And so, you know, we just <laughs> talked about like, that's a chore. So if you decide to do it and if that's the one that you're picking, you're going to get paid for it. You have to do it for everybody. Um, so, you know, that's just like an example, like one of the, the ones that are more for like the whole house. Yeah, I think we talked about like that being like expectations, right? So that versus the chore. And so I, I think that with that, those are tasks that ben that you, right? Like making your bed, um, putting your clothes away, cleaning up after like uh, one of the things for, for Harrison, it's like when, after he brushes his teeth or washes his face, like please wipe the sink off when you're done so there's not water everywhere. Well, that's not a chore. He's not going to get paid for that, but it's like expected, like you've made this mess and now you need to clean it up. Right. Um, yes. But I, I, I like that, that that's a good distinction between like what benefits you and then what benefits everyone um, as, as, as a household. And then, because I think that's where a lot of the complaining comes from maybe is the ones that don't benefit themselves directly. <laughs> Well, the bathroom one too, it's kind of funny. Like that was one, it was like the bathroom always at the end of the night is just like a mess, right? But it's like, who did it? And like, whatever. So that was a chore is that one person had to clean up the bathroom at the end of the night. And I didn't mean like scrubbing the toilet bowl and all of that stuff that that was beyond their age at the time, but it was just like wiping up the counter, making sure all of the toothbrushes and toothpaste, because they all like different ones were back in the drawer. And it was just like a clean countertop, you know, there was like trash on the floor. It was like, at least in the trash can. Uh -huh. um, but that was the thing, like it would become like an issue because it's like, well, they did it or she did it or he did it. And it's just like, well, it's somebody's chore. doesn't matter who did it. That's what they'd have to do at the end of the night, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. But so that might be like a little difference to like, whereas Harrison, it would be an expectation clean up after yourself. But for us, it was like a, an argument or fight. So it'd be like, okay, that's somebody's chore now. <laughs> It, it is different. Marky, are you an only child? Uh, I am an only child and a last born because I have my I have two siblings and my they're half siblings. So okay, I I am my dad's only, so I'm really spoiled. But I'm also the last of everybody, so I'm really spoiled. <laughs> so I wonder, and Monica, like you're one of many. Um, yeah. I'm one of three. I'm the baby, but spoiled as as well but I wonder if like the single only children versus like you know Harrison or I guess Marquis you because you know like you're younger and you only your dad but I wonder if there's a difference between like chores and expectations and those those types of family dynamics right so one single you know only child versus you know two or more children and how it plays a role in what's expected and then what is a chore and then how that's decided and you know um divvied up in in the household because monica i hear you saying like what what i do as an expectation in my house is like a chore for you but i'm wondering if it is because it's an only child situation versus you have yeah. multiple children and people in your house. And so there's yeah, that's more, a question. more opportunities for things that have to be done. Um, I mean, I, I do know. think regardless to though, like one of the great things about, I, I think sometimes I, I did so much as a kid. I'm like, oh man, I didn't, but like, I always had like so much fun playing and like, it's not like that's all I was doing is work, work, work at all. Um, I have like tons of memories of doing all that stuff, but I do think that um, one of the things that I remember um, is like building in is like just like the idea behind that like hard work, though, that I think that I did bring away from having um, a lot of expectations or chores as a child. Um, you know, it's just like you can't just sit around like you've got to get all of these things done. And so I think that even if you are, no matter what, I think having those expectations or chores, no matter what you call it or how it goes, I think it's important to like help build that that basic foundation from home life of like just you know, getting your stuff done, being responsible. I think there's so many benefits to having, you know, chores and expectations, even if they're, even if it's not super necessary. I feel like in my house, because we have like the three kids and it's so busy as like, if I don't get help from them, I, I can't literally do it all. Mm -hmm. But when you have a smaller house, like maybe you can do it all, but it's still, I think, really important to like, you know, yeah. like you definitely, like it's still really important to teach Harris and all those things, even though you probably could do a lot of it yourself, you know, but, um, you know, 
I have a question. So you, when you were talking about chores, and I don't know if you do something similar, Stephanie, you were talking about an allowance, which is like a really clear motivation. And it's also a really clear consequence. If you don't do your chore, you don't get your money, which is very real world. Now, right. when it comes to expectations, I am already hearing that you have, it's a little bit more of a battle. There's a little bit more complaining. And I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there that struggle with, how do you motivate your kids to do the expectations and do the things that kind of benefit themselves, especially if they don't really care about those consequences? And I think you guys may have struggled a little, but you also have wonderful kids. So any advice out there for parents, I'm sure would be appreciated. I I think modeling, you know, there's certain things that I have to do as an adult, as a parent that I don't want to do. Like I, certain things around the house, I just don't want to do, but I do them because it needs to be done. It's living as part of the household. If we want to have a clean house, if we want to, if we want to have dinner, I don't like cooking. That's a chore for me. I hate <laughs> cooking. But, with you, <laughs> but I do it. And I think like as a parent, like just modeling those things that are hard, modeling those things that, um, yes, is a payout good? Of course, like a payout, everyone wants money, but there's just certain things that money, it, it, the the task might be far like, ah, forget it. Like, I, I don't want to get paid because I don't want to do it. But then just modeling those behaviors as a parent and doing the things that we don't like to do. Um, and our kids see that. And I think that that is such a big teacher for our kids as it goes into like instilling those values of, well, it has to be done. Like, even if I don't want to do it because of these, because you can tell them until you're blue in the face about the reasons why they don't care. They just see it as something they have to do. Um, but I think the modeling is a big one. Um, as they get older, they kind of see those things that are happening. It's funny that you say that because um, my family is from Michigan and so they don't get, to, my siblings don't get to travel here as often to California, but I had the pleasure of my brother coming with his family to visit for the first time. And he was cracking up because he was like, you're just like your mom. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you walk around the house and you like turn things to be crooked and you, the, everything has to be on a coaster and you know, like you're constantly cleaning up. And I, you say like modeling is very important. I didn't realize how much I am like my mom when it comes <laughs> to maintaining a house. And as an adult, there was no getting away from it. I am my mom. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, I see my mom going around the house doing a lot of things. And I'm like, I'm kind of like picking things up as she's moving from one room to the other. And I do that, right? So it's like, if I'm going to the kitchen, there's something here, I'm just going to pick it up and move it. And I, that's something that probably I learned from my mom is um, those small things that you don't really think about as anything. And then as you get older, you're like observing that and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Yes, that is where I got that from. <laughs> the bad habits too, probably. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom was always like we always said that she was always working she's always doing stuff but like it was um never like I don't know she'd always be like moving around one thing to the other thing and like I do that a little bit where like I start in one room as I'm cleaning or organizing but the next thing you know like I have one thing and I move it to this room and then I start in that room <laughs> organizing it that's totally from my mom too but eventually it gets done um, I was going to say the other suggestion sometimes is like making, um, especially with the little ones, like making it a game, um, mm -hmm. those things that they have to do. My kids love being timed for some reason, and there's no winner or loser. And I just usually count in my head, but like they love to be timed. Like, how long is it going to take me? So like when they don't want to put away their clothes, for example, um, I'd be like, okay, listen, we're going to time you. Let's see how fast you can put away all of your clothes in the right spots, you know? So trying to like make something fun out of it, make a game out of it if you can. Um, I think that's really helpful for the young kids because yeah. it shouldn't have to be like chores are doom and gloom, you know? Right. Hopefully they can be fun. Um, I definitely think starting like the earlier, the better. It's easier because when they just think it's part of what you do, everybody, because kids love. Um, and I think like, you know, Stephanie, the chores and stuff that you laid out and the tips and tricks and everything with the different ages, like one of the things that you mentioned is like really making it fun. And like when you start it off so early, like their motivation is just to please you so much mm -hmm, as young mm -hmm. kids. Um, and when you capture that, it doesn't, it's not actually that hard. Like kids love picking up when they're yep. 
one and two, they love to clean up. They feel it's like half the playing is cleaning up and it's usually fun for them. So I think that capturing that motivation and like just continuing to build on that um, is awesome. And if you miss that window, you could still make things fun. I also think doing it with them um, can also count a little bit as like um, that one-on-one -on -one time that you need um, and making it fun and doing it with them because if they feel like they're on an island, you know, mm -hmm. it also isn't as much fun, but they feel like, oh, we're doing it together and we're a team and whatever. And then hopefully you can fade that out because ultimately you want them to do it. But um, that's also a good way to like at least start the process, I think. Yeah, um, I think uh, like building in that like motivation. So what you're saying, like um, doing it with them, making it a game, having them listen to their favorite music or having, I know Harrison yeah. likes to put on headphones, listen to music and sing really loud. And I'm like, sure, buddy, if that's going to help you clean your room, like, go for it. Because I put music on and I like to sing and of it makes course. it a little bit more fun versus just feeling like it's doom and gloom and I'm doing this by myself. And uh, the other thing is for like the bigger weekly things is making it like you're not doing the chore with them, but everyone on that day are doing these bigger things. So oh. I get in these moods where I'm like, okay, we need to purge and we need to get rid of like things that are too small, toys you don't play with. And so here's Harrison, your bag, and I'm going to go through my stuff in my room and I, here's my bag. And this is what we're going to do together because it's a longer task, but we're both doing the same thing, but for our own things versus like, this is something that he's going to do on his own. But if we just kind of like these bigger chores we do together because they take longer, even though it's not the same chore, but we're working on it at the same time. Because um, then we're, you know, he doesn't feel like, oh, well, mom's just sitting around not doing anything. And, you know, I'm cleaning my room because it's I'm also doing the same thing. So then he f feels like it's not just him or me. It's we're doing it together. I like that a lot. We, we um, I had a parent training case where we structured it was three kids wild household and we structured it so that they had their list of things that they had to do and once it was done they got their screen time and mm -hmm. that was the only rule you just have to get everything done on the list and then as soon as you're done that's your screen time so the faster you do it the more street screen time you get and um there was one that resisted and really didn't want to have to do those things but there was a lot of motivation in seeing your sibling access the screen time and it was a really simple thing for them to say like that's an option for you you know what you have to get done to be able to have the fun that you want to have and it ended up working out really well for them that's awesome it's another great way just withholding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep just probably a little bit better than removing you know and easier I guess too a little bit right like you have it and then you don't it's taken away versus you just don't have it until you finish it Mm hmm. And I think that that can be really difficult for a lot of parents like you, your guys' suggestions are very much on the before and how do we motivate them? How do we set them up for success? But there are a lot of parents out there that have already gotten sort of into, well, now what do I do? They're not doing it. They're not motivated. Mm -hmm. What can what consequences am I willing to provide? And and I don't know, is there like a certain amount of time that you guys will let uh, the chore be undone and be messy and then sort of have to live with it or deal with it and kind of access a natural consequence. Like if the trash is full, you can't throw your trash away. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that is, that get, does get a little tricky. I think because there's something that have to get done. So I will give it another reminder. Um, usually I guess if it's one of the things that they have to do for everybody. Um, I did say the other day though, I had reminded my daughter, um, I had given her an extra reminder about the trash. And I know that she has gym gymnastics very late in the evening. So I know that when she gets home, it's like the last thing she wants to do is pull out the heavy trash can. Um, and I told her though, as she didn't want to do it before. And I was like, listen, if the trash doesn't go out tomorrow, I am going to make sure that next, you're going to have to figure out a time where we're going to have to take the trash to the dump because we need the trash cans. So like, I'm not going to tell you again, that's my final reminder of the day. So just make sure you figure out a way to remind yourself. And like, she wrote it on a little note for herself and nice. um, got it done but, but afterwards. But I was like, but I didn't know what I was really going to do. Cause I'm like, what am I going to say? Cause like, that's really just like so much work on me. Right. But those, those ones are a little bit tricky. 
Uh, and the other thing is like, because since they get paid for those ones, um, I just, if I did take it out, I would just like, she doesn't get paid for that week, obviously for that chore, if yeah. we have to step in. But um, I don't know, those, one, those ones are a little bit trickier. Yeah. I think with, with Harrison, what I started doing with the particular chore, like the uh, emptying his lunchbox out at the end of the day, that's, he just forgets. And then I'm trying to make his lunch and I don't have the stuff. And so then he owes me. So you have money that you get paid as part of, you know, your weekly, whatever. And if there's anything that I need to do, then you're paying me for that chore. Cause I just did something that you were supposed to do. And so I've seen him like race and at the end of the night and he's like in the kitchen, taking his stuff out and scrubbing the dish because he doesn't want to pay me money to, <laughs> to do that. that. <laughs> and I, it's, I think he's had to pay me a few times and it's just a dollar. And I'm like, you got to pay me a dollar for doing something that you're supposed to do. Um, and I think I've only had to do it a few times. And then I, I, I am having to remind him, but I'm not having to do it. So at least he's okay. starting to learn, like, I don't want to pay my mom for something that I can just do on my own. Because if he takes it out and puts it in the sink, I'll wash it. But if at the end of the night, if the dishes are done, the kitchen is closed and he still hasn't emptied out his lunchbox, like I'm not doing it. And if I have to do it, he has to pay me. He's only had to do it twice and not be actually washing his own if he doesn't do it sooner. So um, that's another <laughs> way it's, you know, because that's kind of what happens in real life, right? Like if you don't do your job and you know, these Somebody things else. translate to real life things and someone has to do it for you, there's going to be consequences, whatever, whatever those consequences are, um, you know, going to the dump and now it's a bigger chore. Yeah. <laughs> I have to drive somewhere and go to a stinky dump and empty the trash out. And um, I think Monica, what you were saying earlier, you know, it's like these translate over to as our kids get older and they're learning different things and it's, instilling these type of values to help them be better spouses or employees or students or roommates or whatever it is it's going to help them in the long run as they get older and like for those parents out there that are struggling with like how young it do I start this process a lot of this gets into school readiness like if you yeah. want your kiddo to be ready for school, like having some basic responsibilities and some basic expectations will set them up for success when they get into school. Yeah, even if it's like the simpler things like cleaning up after themselves, uh, take, picking their trash up and throwing it away, like all those things are things that are going to be expected of them when they start preschool. I mean, even at the earliest classes, that's they're expected to engage in those behaviors. Yeah, because all the kids do chores or expectations in the, in school. And you know what's so funny is like in the classroom, you know, when they have that like chore chart and each kid gets to have one, it's like they mm -hmm. love doing that stuff. Like they, they get do. so excited. Like, oh my gosh, I get to wipe the tables down. <laughs> like I get to be like, the line leader. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's looked at as like a, a like a position, like a that's yes. something that they, it's the ownership too. I think that that's like naturally built in at the school setting. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so like trying to like transition that to home and making it so that it's like, oh, it's yours. Like you should take pride in it and be excited that it, you get to do that yourself and all that stuff. So, um, cause they do it all the time. They're always happy to usually, I mean, most of the time, most kids are really happy to have those chores and sometimes there's better ones than others, right? Like line leader, but, um, right. Right. Yeah. I, um, it can sound like a lot of work, creating visuals, creating a checklist, making a list, following through, reminding. And I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but it should, if you're doing a lot of work in the beginning, set you up so later, it's not as much work. And there is some intrinsic motivation and they're kind of learning habits. Have you guys had that experience where you've put in the work in the beginning and you're kind of benefiting from it now? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I think one thing, like an easy example for me was like, um, like bedtime routine and morning routine, um, where I think I used, you know, quite a bit of visuals in the beginning as to like what my expectations were, um, especially like at the end of the evening when, um, you know, we're just like tired and like battling and everything, but they, the kids like, like checking off the thing. They liked having their own little visual um, and they could see what they still had to do. And that was way better than us telling them all of the steps that they needed. And now we don't really have to have the checklist. And they're really, all three of them are really great with their morning and evening routines. Like they don't, they do like all the things like they, they take their shower, they brush their teeth. 
Um, they write in their journal and, you know, put out their clothes for the next day. So all of those things are like pretty built in as like just a staple. So even when we're not here, like when we've had babysitters and stuff, they, the babysitters are always like, wow, they like know all the things that they need to do. Like, I don't know to tell them. I say, it's like time to get ready for bed. And they like do all the things. And I was like, yeah, like that's, and you know, they're, they're nine, eight and six now. Um, so it wasn't like a ton of years. I mean, it's, and they've been doing it pretty well for a while, but all three of them are just, they kind of just get it done. And it's just part of the habit that it's not like a battle anymore. Awesome. Yeah. I think having it, like when you instill it when they're really young and you work on it a lot, cause it is a lot of work, but it does have its benefits at later, you know, after they've been doing it for a while, and then it just becomes part of their routine. And then it's, but it is a lot of work. I mean, you, as you know, reminding them over and over and doing those things, but there is a good outcome. Yeah. So at the like, end. And consistency. <laughs> I think, I think the consistency is like such a big part of that. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, you do not want to do that's like the last thing you want to do is like go through all that. But I mean, there are things that make it easier, um, like the checklist and stuff. And hopefully your kids are kind of into those and whatever. Um, and there's different ones you can use, but they could be super simple. Like I used to just draw pictures even for my youngest that when they couldn't read, I would draw pictures of the things that she had to do. So I'd like draw pictures of clothes or like the shower, um, things like that. And, you know, and always like the reinforce at the end is that we always are reading books with them at the end of the evening. Like we'll, they'll each get time to get um, books read or wrestle with them. So I think that that partly is just like built in, but that's like our every night routine. Um, and we had to be there the entire time. It wasn't like a break time for us. It was like go time for us all the way till we got in, them to bed. But now it's like, they go off and do that for, you know, 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And that is time where I can like get the dishes done now. But it took like years before. <laughs> we had that time, you know, but yeah. But you highlight something in. important that, um, sorry, you highlight something important, Monica, that parent attention is a huge reinforcer. Just that quality yeah. time and attention has such an impact on kids. And it's easy to forget that your attention alone can, can really do that. Yeah. Go ahead, Steph. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to comment on. It's that built in time with parents and it's something that you would do anyway. Right. So like reading a book is something that you would do, but it's it's built into the activity. And um, I think that that's like for parents that work all day or don't have the time to spend with their kids because they're working all day and they're busy doing house, you know, building in that little bit of one on one time is enough to it's just natural. Like it's just happening. You're not giving them money. You're not doing all these external things is just part of the routine and spending time with your your child. And then that itself could motivate them to, okay, if I hurry up and I do this routine, I get this done, I brush my teeth, I put on my pajamas, I do all these things. And that's faster time that I get to spend with my mom and dad. And I get to, you know, read a book with them or snuggle with them in bed. Um, and we capitalize on those things um, because it, it, it builds in that motivation um, for them to get it done. Um, well, thank you once again for joining us on another episode of PLP. Uh, we really hope that this uh, discussion on chores uh, shed some light on when to start chores with your child, what type of chores, how you can motivate them, and how you can complete those things as a family together. Um, we hope to see you next time. Take care. If you guys have questions, you can go to our website or comment. Um, we're happy to answer them. Um, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye.